Aaron Moy has been tipped to join Celtic during the January transfer window. The midfielder ticks a number of boxes being an Australian with experience of playing in Scottish football. Moy is currently contracted to Shanghai Port, but according to Laurie McKinna his family is already based in the Glasgow area, a legacy of his time with St Mirren, before globetrotting in Australia, England and China. Getting players to uproot families to move to Glasgow can be a stumbling block in some transfer deals but in this case that stage may already have been negotiated. McKinna has been involved with Newcastle Jets in the A-League and claims to be a long-term friend of Angie. Moy would be perfect for Angie's system, attacking midfielder who wins tackles and sets up chances. Fantastic set-piece player and I hear his family are already in Glasgow. I'd be amazed if they haven't had a few quiet discussions. The apparent hamstring injury, sustained by Celtic talisman Kyogo Furuhashi, was the product of the sort of decision by Angie Postacogla that gives the Australians sleepless nights. The Japanese striker was one of a raft of players left out of the Celtic starting lineup for the 3 2 win over Real Betis on Thursday, as Postacogla sought to give his mainstays a breather in the midst of a hectic schedule. However, a hamstring injury sustained by Albion Ajeti only 27 minutes into the Europa League encounter that had nothing riding on it led to Furuhashi being introduced, only to suffer the same fate as the Swiss with 19 minutes of normal time remaining. The Celtic manager admits, the turn of events proved exasperating with the indeterminate absence of Furuhashi, likely to leave him with no senior central strikers for the encounter with Motherwell, Jorgos Jakumakis, also still working his way back to fitness following a knee problem. It's frustrating. Those are the decisions you make as a manager, said the 56-year-old. You probably have a sleepless night thinking about the different scenarios. But my whole ethos has always been that you go out there and you go for things. You never hold back. It has served me well up until now and I'll continue to do that with the way I want my team to play and the decisions I make. It's just my nature to be more aggressive than sometimes people think I need to be. But we will get our rewards because of that. Let's face it Celtic fans didn't really like the side-to-side -side slow stuff under Rodgers. So I see Angie a bit more like Tommy Burns. The Celtic manager, Angie won't admit it in public but deep down he'll know it was a mistake to throw Kyogo Furuhashi into Thursday's dead rubber. He will have been kicking himself when the striker pulled up holding his hamstring. But that doesn't mean that he should be battered for doing it. It was the wrong call and it backfired. I get why the fans will all be thinking the same. It was a mistake, but Poster Cogler hasn't made many of them. You have to admire his attitude though. It's all or nothing with the Celtic manager and no one can say it's not exciting. He made a big call the other night, but he had honourable intentions. Call it an honest mistake, if you like. Kyogo getting injured at some point was inevitable given the amount of football he's played in the last 9 or 10 months. He could have limped off inside the first 5 minutes against Motherwell tomorrow. I totally get the notion the well match is more important and Kyogo should not have been risked but Postacogla would have looked at his bench and wondered what other choice did he have. Could he have played Mikey Johnston through the middle? Leal Labada? Maybe. But the manager was desperately unlucky to see Albion a jetty hobble off after barely half an hour. His plans went out the window and hindsight is easy. Either way, it's left the Celtic manager facing the nightmare situation he'd have feared. Celtic are going into a crucial spell of the season and it looks like they will be without their two most dangerous players in Kyogo and Hotta. The manager will be praying the pair of them can get back for the Rangers game on January 2nd but until then it's up to others to step up. It just highlights how light the Celtic squad is right now and how much the manager needs backing in January. On that note have a great day Celtic fans. Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party, roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party.